Hello, my name's John Billingham, and although I've always enjoyed playing card games, until recently I've never played any poker. I learnt the game about four years ago by playing Zinger Poker on Facebook. And yes, I know that's not a promising way to start, but unlike most of the people playing on Zinger, I eventually realised I was pretty hopeless at it. So I did the obvious thing that bad Zinger Poker players do, I started playing for real money. Which only confirmed my view that I was a bit of a fish. So, about three years ago, I decided that what I needed was some coaching, but, as I like to be thrifty with my cash, I decided that I should try to persuade a coach to help me by promising to help them write a book with me about our experiences. I earn my living as a mathematician, and I've written a couple of textbooks. Not exactly bestsellers, but books nonetheless, and I do like to write, so it seemed like a good idea at the time. Little did I know what I was letting myself in for. In the end, I was lucky enough to end up with two coaches, my co-authors Thomas Tirock and Emmanuel Sinker, who I met online at pokerstrategy.com, where we're all enthusiastic bloggers. The book that we wrote, The Education of a Modern Poker Player, is the story of my attempts to learn how to play short-handed no-limit hold'em cash games, starting from NL10 and trying to reach NL200. The title is based on the title of a classic book written by Herbert Yardley in the 1950s, The Education of a Poker Player. Yardley was a middle-aged genius who used giving out sound poker advice as an excuse to tell his entertaining life story. I am a middle-aged fish and am using my mildly amusing story as an excuse to let my co-authors teach me, and you the reader, how to play winning poker. So although the book is nominally about me, we've simply used my story as a framework within which to teach you how to play poker, assuming at the outset that you have some basic knowledge of how to play No, no Limit Hold'em and at least a small amount of online playing experience. After demonstrating to my coaches what a complete whale I was a couple of years ago, they taught me some basic strategy, and in the book we illustrate the basic concepts in action using examples of hands that I played, usually very badly. Fingers are wagged at me, and I am laughed at over and over again, but I responded well to the cruel-to-be-kind approach to coaching that Mr Tirock used with me, and I started to improve my game. I also learned the hard way about how random fluctuations can affect your bankroll, and in the book I'll discuss some of the mathematics behind this and try to give you some idea of the kind of random noise that you can expect to experience when you play No Limit Hold'em. At about this time we decided that, given my lifestyle, that is my family, I have three children, and my work commitments, it would be best if I played fast fold poker. At the time this meant rush poker on full tilt, but more recently I've been playing some Zoom on PokerStars and fast fold games are available on many other networks. These get games let you play about 250 hands per hour per table, so if like me you only have at most a couple of hours to spare in the evening to play poker, fast fold games are a godsend. Thomas gives some specific advice on these games in the book, advice that you might find surprising if you've never given these games much thought. There'll be an interlude in the middle of the book which corresponds to the time when Full Tilt had borrowed my entire online poker bankroll, which almost led to the wheels falling off this coaching project. So instead I learned how to play five card draw and I studied some game theory. I'll show you the strategy that I used to beat five card draw, the poker variant with which I've probably had the most success, and also talk about why poker is such a hard game for computers to play well. I'll then introduce you to game theory through some toy poker games which will relate back to No Limit Hold'em. Once Full Tilt gave me my money back, I'd reached NL50 and learned some more advanced strategy, which is also illustrated with hand examples in the book. We also discussed the psychology of poker, playing heads up and playing live. If you want to know how the project ended, you'll have to read the book. In conclusion then, I can't really say that I've changed from a fish to a shark, but I now have a sound understanding of the theory and practice of poker and not just No Limit Hold'em, and although I'm never going to be a pro, poker's become a rewarding hobby for me, and also a topic that I enjoy trying to study using mathematics. As I say in the book, poker really is the king of games, and I hope that after reading our book, you'll think so too.